Dungeon Runners Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Dungeon Runners Podcast. I'm uh, Mr. Creepy Pasta, and uh, or Spike, and um, this week I'm with Matt. Hell yeah, and Creeps, Creeps make pasta. Yo, 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 my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got something weird to say every time we start off the podcast. <laughs> well, that's we never... the thing. You can either be not remembered as the person who goes, oh, hello, yes, I'm Crucio Pasta. Or you could be forever remembered for coming in with the sickest intro. That's not the sickest intro. It's just the one thing that catches the others of us off guard and makes me forget what I was going to talk about next. <laughs> exactly. And I'll be remembered for that. What are you going to be remembered for? Exactly. Well, <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, you guys, so, question. Have you guys, well, actually, there's a question before the question. Have you guys actually watched a movie called um, Being John Malkovich? No. What? Have you, have you guys seen the movie Being John Malkovich? No. No? That, it's a, are you making this up? No, no, it's an actual is movie. This is a joke. Is this like no. knock knock? No. Jo- Being John Malkovich is an actual movie, and I'm going to tell you guys the plot of this, and you're going to be fucking wowed by it, because it's kind of fucking ridiculous. It came out in 1999. Um, it stars uh, John Cusack, and uh, it, it's basically this movie where um, j- these these people discover a room in a building where when you walk into the room, um, it puts you inside the head and lets you control the body of John Malkovich, the actor. <laughs> Why does this uh, sound familiar? But okay. it, it only lets you do this for a very limited amount of time. I think you can do it for maybe like 10 minutes or something. Then it kicks you out of his head, and then you end up on the side of a highway. Well, these guys eventually make a um, make a business out of it, and um, you can pay a lot of money to be John Malkovich for a short period of time, and then they come pick you up on the side of the highway. Uh, my my thing is this: assuming that these rooms were infinite, you could be any celebrity um, that is currently alive, so not not a dead thing. For ten minutes, who would you want to be, and why? Wow. Celebrity, like, does it have to be a movie star celebrity, or can it be like I think any it could sort be of any person. celebrity? But you could only be them for ten minutes. 10 minutes. Oh, that's not uh, enough time. You, that's you, the thing. Like, And you you could come into the, like, you you won't, don't exactly know when you're going to hop into their body, of course. They could be, like, in the middle of pooping, which means that you're going to spend 10 minutes pooping, or they could be, you know, like, you're not going to say, like, oh, yes, I want to hop into the body of a porn star because then I'll, I'll spend 10 minutes having sex because not necessarily will that take place. <laughs> No, because like 10 minutes, what do you do with the rest of the... (laughs) What do you do with the next nine and a half minutes? (laughs) That's what I was going to (laughs) say. I couldn't get my words out. (laughs) I (laughs) pre-laughed. I (laughs) pre-laughed you. (laughs) So you're saying you you won't know what they're doing, but what if there's like, say, you know, you think, oh, okay, this is is the president of the United States room, and you know he's going to do a big speech. And you just see how far you can get away with saying the rarest things and end with taking a turd on the floor and pointing at it and being like, uh, brown people, and then just see how far oh you God. can go. Like, just, just really ruin it and put, put pick someone That's... who gets away with a lot of stuff anyway and then see how far you can take that, like, reputation. So, so Trump... Exactly. <laughs> I'm pretty for sure that I piece I'm together pretty what sure you're trying to say. right now with Trump. Like, someone just when got I, a hold of his Twitter. It's like people taking it Matt, in turns just When tweeting. I said the President of the United States, it wasn't a riddle for you to figure <laughs> out. It wasn't like, who oh, what am I talking about? Was it uh, Bill Clinton? Like... <laughs> okay, so in other words, what you're saying, Creeps, is that you want to take over the body of Donald Trump for 10 minutes. As long because, yeah. I mean, it could be known, like, a lot easier to plan out when you would take over his body, seeing as, like, he's one of those, uh, well, I mean, he's a political figure, but I guess he's one of those celebrities where you could easily tell where he's going to or when he's going to be, where he's going to be at any given time, so you could correctly jump in at the right moment. Oh my gosh, what if you invite him, you'd be like, hey, uh, Gerard Butler, I have a really big proposition for you. And you make like a proper media company, like you've made so much money from this uh, Jared Butler room. And you, you make so much money, you make a media company. And you show him the budget, you're like, we're going to make this movie, you've got to come to this penthouse. This like an amazing set, it's just for you. And you can stay here and everything. And then he wa- and you, you open the door, you're like, yeah, just step in, we'll, we'll come in right behind you. And he walks into his own head. What happens? They, okay. That happens in the movie. Oh, <gasps> oh I, I feel like we just hit some spoilers. 
Yeah, I mean, do you Maybe guys want to know what happens when, when Malkovich walks into the body of Malkovich? Or do you, you want to watch the movie? Because it's actually a really good movie. See, I half want to do both. That's the annoying thing, but also <laughs> spoilers. Yeah, but the movie came out, what, almost 20 years ago now? Yeah, but so, now I'm invested. Now I've got to watch it. I mean, no, what, what happens? What happens? Okay, when he when he gets inside of... when Of course, John Malkovich realizes that he's losing, you know, more time in his life when he doesn't realize what he's doing, right? So, um, eventually, he, uh, uh, he tracks down this business. He gets angry. He gets upset. And he says, like, no, I want to go see what's in this room. And when he walks into the room, he is suddenly at dinner and across from him is another him and the waiter is a him and everybody else at all of the tables around him are also him and all they can say are the word Malkovich <laughs> and he's stuck in this hell for 10 minutes <laughs> before it kicks him out <laughs> Wait, <laughs> so if he if he jacks off everyone in the room does that mean he's just like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> is this like the kissing your own clone question we had the other week I, I, I don't times know. a thousand just kiss everyone you run. You just run down the street going, make my way around town, walking See, this, fast. Okay, here's the thing though. It's a different question when it's like a clone. It's, a, it's like you have one other you, but if like the entire world is you, would you really want to gang bang yourself? As just that right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, have you guys heard of the crazy reputation of uh, Bill, uh, Bill Murray? Yeah. yeah. Like... Is it the Bill weirdness? Murray? Yeah, yeah, Bill Murray. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. He's there's an entire website dedicated to just, just telling stories about how Bill Murray party crashes, does crazy stuff at pe people's parties, and he just on the principle that he's Bill Murray, and then just <laughs> go, he just walks into random people's parties and just, or just does crazy things at nightclubs. And there's like loads of stories online. Do you think there's a Bill Murray room? And there's a lot of people having a <laughs> lot of fun right now. Oh shit. <laughs> Just on the principle that they are Bill Murray. That that's a celebrity I'd pick. <laughs> Bill Murray. Now that you put it that way, you could literally do anything and nobody would ever like think that there was a problem. Even Bill Murray probably wouldn't think that there was a problem. <laughs> like, oh, it's just another crazy night, I guess. I'm Bill yeah. Murray. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm that's stuck. I'm kind of torn because like part of me would want to try think of like, oh, what's the best? possible way i can benefit or you know, like get something out of this weird exchange but at the same breath there's not much you can do in terms of positivity or good things that you could do in 10 minutes the only thing i can think of doing that you could do within 10 minutes is trying to ruin someone's reputation so i'm not thinking of celebrities that i want to be i'm thinking of celebrities that i'd want to destroy so you no know, why, why do you have to think outward though like you know like i i always bring up the reputation of Liam Neeson and his giant wang. But the thing is, you could go into his body and confirm it. Yeah, but you, was, would you want to? You just put your hand down, be like, it is big, and then leave. I mean, okay, that, that's like <laughs> such a mundane use of the action. You realize the freedom you're given in this situation, right? <laughs> okay, but his one's confirmed, but Will Smith is a rumor. Like, wow. Why does it matter to you that much? You're like, yes, I have, I have the, this godly ability to take control of another human being's life. I want to guarantee to myself, because no one will ever believe me after this point. Don't underestimate the power of my petty curiosity. I was going to say, you could, it, in that situation, you could be like, yes, he does have a giant wang. Pull out his cell phone, take a picture of it, and text a picture to yourself. Okay, that's that's too complicated. I just I, no, I just know it. I don't have to confirm it. I just want to know it. Okay, bear in mind today I was like literally today I just got curiosity about goldsmithing, so I watched an entire like movie length video of a guy making a ring. That's how petty my curiosity gets. I just I just like if I'm interested in something mildly, like I've I've seen about fifty tutorials on blacksmithing, something I probably never will do, but I was just curious on how blacksmithing works. Blacksmithing is fun though. Like I've watched those videos. It's almost like when you're watching like a uh, blacksmith just start planishing um, like something like something bowl shaped. It, it's just mesmerizing to see. Yeah. Like a like a hypnotic thing, man. Like mm -hmm. you ever watch um, like the carpenters work on like just making wooden bowls? Yes. <gasps> yeah. uh, Dowling, what it's called? No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about because they they have it like spinning and then you you'll have, see them like just shaving off bit yeah. by bit to get that that thing. I like it's it like when a they speed up the footage and the sound going. 
instead of like <laughs> them hitting something. It's it's just therapeutic to me. I love it. Yeah. No, I mean, we, you, all of us, we watched uh, when Bob Ross was doing his, when Twitch had oh, the Bob Ross. Oh, dude, uh, yeah. Thing. That's like that um, that ASMR effect, because like there's a good amount of time, minutes in that show, when it's nothing but just the sound of him patting the uh, the canvas with a paintbrush. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, boy. Dude, that, the stream, when they first started streaming the Bob Ross stuff, I, uh, it, it's kind of unforgettable. Like, it's one of those, you had to be there moments. Like, if you watch the stream now, or if you just watch his videos, it's all right. But, like, when everyone's chatting in the chat, and we're all getting together and calling for hours just watching him, it, it was just fun. Yeah. I like that time. It was really oh, good. Oh, I no. want to control Bob Ross, and then I just got sad. <laughs> yeah, it has to be somebody alive, man. He's alive in our hearts, so if we take him over, you'll be in your heart. <laughs> you ever seen that one picture of like Bob Ross in the clouds? It looks like Mufasa. No, I've seen like <laughs> the, all the memes where it's just like Bob Ross is the canvas and the canvas is Bob Ross. <laughs> what do you mean, like, like a face swap thing? Yeah, like those dumb face swap things. <laughs> He's so in the happy stupid. clouds now. Oh no! Don't do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's go back to celebrity dicks. <laughs> Wait, so, okay. So, Creeps, you would go into Will Smith to confirm if he has a massive wang or not. Yeah. Cool. Um, I totally, like, the more you talk about Bill Murray, the more I just want to go into Bill Murray's body. Because it sounds like no matter what, you're always going to have a good time if you're, if you're Bill Murray. But, Matt, you have almost, like... In almost in perfect sequence to the way that we usually do these hypotheticals, not come to a conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know anything about celebrities. Maybe you will jump watch. into someone decisive. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Gordon Ramsay. Hell yeah, he's super decisive. But I, 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 there's nothing I'd want to do. Oh my gosh! Imagine jumping into Gordon Ramsay while he's cooking, like for like famous people or like really important people who just make like really bad scrambled eggs and see how like for the next 10 minutes like next nine minutes or something see how far you can blag how gourmet it is before he jumps back and he's just like what the hell you no know, have, you, have you guys seen those videos of gordon ramsay where he's like he's got like a whole like um uh like class of student uh, student chefs who was in front of him and he's showing him exactly how to make like the, like the perfect version of a dish like i've seen like when he's showing like the perfect way to make like a lobster or something like that that would be yeah. like the best time to just jump into his body because you don't even know what you're making but you're just having <laughs> readings in front of you and everybody basically accepts whatever you say is law at that point so just, <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're throwing pure eggshells in with no egg at all just, <laughs> just so you get the the crunchy texture <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, yeah I gotta listen to him. It's Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> just puts the egg in his mouth and just spits it in the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> just hear it crack <laughs> and just start mixing it, like hearing the gristle <laughs> sort yeah, of thing. Jump into someone really trusted and just say weird things. Like I was about to say Elon Musk, but because he just says crazy things, like we should we should be a forward-thinking society. Oh, we should technology like like a crazy scientist heathen. But then he also believes that we could be possibly brains in jars and everything is a simulation. So I feel like he's discredited himself a bit in my eyes of trying to discredit him in his mind. Uh, you, that was a fucking roundabout. What? <laughs> Dude, you can't double back to yourself a few times. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying like pick someone really trusted and just say like, like, you know, Gordon Ramsay, but like pick someone like who's the most trusted person in the world and what's the craziest thing you can do with them? The world is a weird place, man. Usually the most trusted people already say a lot of weird shit. Right, I think I got it. I think I got my answer. It's taken a while. I had a bit of the Sherlock moment, you know, the, the bit with the flying numbers going whoosh, 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 and I was doing the Mind Palace thing. Going, doo, 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 doo. I think I got it, right? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a company, right? Following? You listening? You listening? Huh? Mm -hmm. Make a company. Get some basic you know, stock shares, put it up, put it on the open market. Uh, you know, the stocks are out there. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'll figure a way. I'll become Warren Buffett. One of the richest, like in the top 10 richest guys in the world. Investor, right? Utter billions. And I'll just sink, you know, a couple of million, maybe even a billion into my company. You know what? In 10 Jeez, minutes? Or whatever. 
Yeah, no, yeah, just sink everything in there real quick. This is a fast turnaround. I know this thing's gonna explode. We're gonna put everything we got into it. Uh, don't hold, don't hold the stops. I'm gonna lock myself in the cupboard, but you know, everyone, everyone, do your jobs because I presume that everyone else does the clickety clacks and the typey types with his bank details. And then I'm gonna lock myself in a cupboard so I can't say no to this in <laughs> about 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> Don't worry about it. I got handcuffs. I'm gonna cuff myself to the the, the, the radiator and kick the phone away from me, and <laughs> just buy everything. Poor buy man everything. To die. <laughs> no, someone will save him. It's just like you know, by the time the transaction's gone through, and I'm like, oh yeah, by the way, we're in liquidation. I'm taking the money. Um, he's gonna be all like, well, darn it. I thought it was a good investment, but now I'm awake. Yeah, for some reason. <laughs> some reason <laughs> I cannot remember. I cuffed myself to a radiator. <laughs> so I can't I couldn't cancel the transaction. Like I feel like that seriously just goes to a dark place. It's like you just leave him handcuffed to a radiator or you kick the phone away from him. So as soon as he just wakes up, he has no way of calling for help. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, some how about people are into that. Die. They're kink shame. You know what Warren's into. Hey Warren, <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> I you just just yeah, if you're listening, I got you, fam. You know, I'll stick up for you. What's the name of the Playboy Mansion guy? Because you, I thought you were talking about him for a little bit. Hugh Hefner. Hugh yeah, they were both. Have didn't he sell names. the mansion? I was say, like honestly, I wouldn't. There's a certain level where it's like you could even pick like Hugh Hefner. Like I'd hop into his body because I don't even know what the fuck he does all day. Isn't it? Isn't the condition of buying his mansion that he gets to still live there? Yeah, he gets a room that you can never enter, and it's like off bounds. Really? You're just buying a house with Hugh Hefner. <laughs> That's basically the condition. That sounds both amazing and disgusting at the same time. <laughs> Grapes. Mm -hmm. How's your week been? How's, How's my week been? My week been has been a blur of just doing really weird things. So like the recent thing I've gotten into is tarot cards and I've read a whole book on all the cards meanings and doing little readings. And that has been my random skill that I randomly learned for no apparent reason. And also the goldsmithing thing thing. I've been getting into that for some reason. Don't know why. I just have. Are you going to be picking and, it up? Like, are you getting like tools to be able to? Like, I'm, no, I literally, it's, been, it's within the last few hours that I picked up this random obsession with uh, getting God. into making a ring. I just want to make a ring. I don't know why. I just get weird urges, man. Weird urges. What do I do with my weird urges? I mean, you follow through with it. I mean, like, it's not like you can't make a ring. I'm assuming that anybody could be able to learn these skills and you could be able to master them too, yeah? I was trying to do a masturbation joke, but yeah, like, no, I can totally do it. I've seen someone make a ring guys, out of penny. Every what? time you guys talk about Isn't skills it? and stuff, I just keep thinking of Napoleon Dynamite. You know, it's just like, oh, I can't talk to this girl. I don't know any skills. I can't wield a bow staff. I'm like, I don't know why. It just reminds me of it. Right. <laughs> no, no, I can just keep picturing creeps as Napoleon Dynamite trying to pick up ladies. Well, I mean, I'm like a lady. I've never seen that movie, so I have no idea what you're What? To. You are never seen not Napoleon. missing out. Uh, it's, see, it's that's funny. what I that's what I hear is like it's not amazing. It's, it's weird. It's odd. It's like awkward comedy, but it's funny. It's funny. It's a bit like awkward comedy, Superbad. like The Office. See, I've never seen Superbad. Superbad is terrible, but the thing is, it's so like quotable great. that you can quote it to anyone, and they'll always get the reference, and then you'll always share that bond. It's a bit like memes before memes, where it's, it's mm. a lot of memes are not funny. But it's a big joke that everyone is in on, and it's good for people who are unoriginal and can't think of their own jokes to spout to <laughs> seem funny. I had the same if thing you... with Pulp Fiction. I think yeah. it's because it's really overhyped to me. It's like, oh, it's the best film ever. It's my favorite one, blah, blah, blah. And I watched it. I was like, that's just a secret to random stories. It doesn't make sense. What are you talking <laughs> about? I could, it's, it's an, that's an indie film. A student's made that. There's no way that's AAA. To be fair, you pretty much summed up like the way Quentin Tarantino <laughs> tells stories. <laughs> well, he does it quite well, to be fair. That's, uh, Quentin Tarantino is considered to be like the master of storytelling, isn't he? Yeah. Also the master of telling, starting a story from the end and going back around, going back to the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Tell it, story it was kind of like revolutionary at the time. Like he did that before that was like a big thing. Yeah. The way he tells, like he, he doesn't structure a story like A, B, C, D. He's like very, it's like someone ate alphabet soup and thought that would be a great way to tell a story. Well, I mean, like, there's a lot of cases where, like, I think um, it doesn't necessarily work out with Quentin Tarantino movies. Because, like, there's there's some movies that he's made that I've just, seriously, I, I can't understand what the thought process of it was. Like, uh, 
The one they made a television show out of recently about vampires, except it wasn't about vampires. Shit, what was it called now? Fuck Jonah me. Hex. You made one about vampires? No, it's God, Jonah Hex? Ugh. No. Uh, <laughs> there was a movie that he did. God, I cannot think of the goddamn name of it now. Uh, from Dusk Till Dawn. Did you guys see From, du from Dusk Till Dawn? No. It was, um, it was a movie starring George Clooney and Quentin Tarantino and his weird foot fetish that he usually has. <laughs> and then um, there are robbers in Texas who are trying to make their way into Mexico. And as soon as they get into Mexico, they're suddenly being attacked by all the vampires ever. This is like Abraham, ha Abraham Lincoln based on a true story. You, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, okay, you can't tell me that movie was not based on a true story because it was based on a true story. They just embellished a lot of it. And added yeah, vampires. they embellished like he was a president or something, but everything else was real. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> was oh, so that a story sad when he end? was a president? Yeah, that means, even the, the whole thing about the, uh, the, at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, when they're transporting the, um, they're transporting the guns via the, um, uh, they're transporting the guns via the Underground Railroad versus being transferred via the train. That was an actual thing. Like that was actually a thing in his presidency. He, he was axe fighting on top of a moving train vampire. No, the plan <laughs> was a thing in his presidency. Yeah, the, the train was fighting. exaggerated, but the axe yeah, the fighting <laughs> on top of the train cart with the vampires. Was, I remember no, true. At the time when I watched that movie, I was dating a history buff, and she was getting so upset about how. Um, <laughs> Certain things that happen, he's like, oh, yeah, that's actually really interesting how they, why is he on the train wielding an axe, <laughs> defending it? He's the president of the United <laughs> States. <laughs> it's exactly why she be wielding an axe. It's like that mayor from that one video game who's just like the mayor of a city. But he, he's saving, yeah, Hagar. yeah. <laughs> he's real. just walking around with a giant mustache and a giant pipe just beating people up. Like, yeah. I'll protect my own city. Okay, he is the man that I would honestly really vote for as a mayor. See, I mean, like, I, I believe he could press. No, no, no. Here's the thing: we joke that it's a good thing, but it's really happening in the Philippines, and it's terrifying because it's causing like backlash and a lot of blood wars in the streets. Please it's not a elaborate. real. I I don't know this. What's happening? You don't know this? Ah, uh, so the mayor no. of um the mayor of um or president of the Philippines is like, yo, man, drugs are bad let's go on the streets and kill all druggies. And so they're going on the streets, kill all druggies, and they're like, you know what? Muslims too. Let's get them. So they're literally going around trying to kill them all. It sounds like the stereotypical, yeah, we should just round you up and kill them. Except the problem is it's just forming like street militias to fight back. And also it's causing people to be like, I don't like my neighbor. Yeah, he's on drugs. So then like people like, you know, random, like coincidentally oh. a random gang comes around and kills them. It's like terrifying. Don't oh, go there. Shit. Oh well, that's. Hmm. Trump said that he likes him as well. That's usually a red Whoa, flag. Really? What? Yeah, he's like he agrees with his policies or something like that. I'm like, oh no. His, his policies of just riding up and killing people <laughs> he doesn't like. Yeah. yeah. I mean, why not? That's that's <laughs> a solution, isn't it? It's, it's a solution. It definitely is. That is a way to end a problem. However, it, it might not like be the best you're gonna make solution. more problems. I mean, <laughs> it's like, oh crap, I need to nail this nail into the wall, but I haven't got a hammer. I'll just use a refrigerator. It's just like, yeah, it's it's a solution, but it's not the... It's, it's just gonna cause more problems than it is gonna fix it. I was like, you guys saw that um, The Rock uh, registered himself uh, for the... Yeah, uh, 2020. Yeah, for the oh. election in 2020. Is Kanye 2020 happening? Say what? Kanye West in the VMAs like two years ago said he wanted to run for president. It's like Kanye 2020, uh, 2020. If it, if I swear to God, if the race for president is The Rock versus uh, Kanye West, <laughs> I wait, will... what party is The Rock going for? Though is he? I, I, I have no clue. I just I just saw like the the headlines of the post and I was like, good for him, and then moved on. <laughs> Would you vote for him? Do you reckon? I don't want to talk. I don't want to ask you who you're going to vote for. What are you going to vote I for? I don't. Him? Look, here's here's my thing. I'm not not referring to what I would vote for, but I would say that if The Rock legitimately wanted to try this, like I, I assume this is this is ninety percent a joke. But um, if The Rock actually wanted to try this, I legitimately believe that he would probably win because all of the um, it was already proven with Obama that like young people can highly influence the vote if they cared to vote. If The Rock actually ran then young people would vote dude because it's the damn rock yeah 
He can be my rock. Hell yeah. I'd want Giving him as back president. the people's elbow. <laughs> when I describe a movie to you guys, and you guys guess what it is? Yeah, it's Idiocracy. Close. But basically, <laughs> so imagine there's like a, there's like a group of friends, like a group of uh, you know young friends. They all like live together, and they all go around each other's houses, and like um, you know they all hang out together on like the streets and stuff. And then there's like one new guy comes on the block, and he's like, "Yo, man!" Like he's full of energy. He's like really like really like out there, and like he, he makes friends with them all of them. Except for this one guy, who's just like, yo, this guy's really annoying. And he, you know, because he went around the other guy's house and he broke something. And he's like, yo, I don't like how this guy acts, man. He's really annoying. You know, he just peer pressures everyone else to agreeing with him. Except for like one person who's a bit like on the fence. And his solution is really dumb. Like instead of confronting him like a normal person should, he decides, he says like, yo, we should take him to a dangerous part of the area and just leave him there. And then he'll get so scared that he'll like he'll think he's gonna die. Like full on, he'll just like be like he'll just be so so shook, so like PTSD that he'll never be enthusiastic and have any enthusiasm ever again. And then we'll, we'll go collect him, and then we won't admit to it. <laughs> I know the film. <laughs> yeah, I think I know too. Is this God. Malibu's Most Wanted? What? Is Malibu's Most Wanted? No. No. Well, Matt? shit. That's, you just Matt, described the same thing. Keep going. Okay, creeps, keep going. We're going to do it till Spike. Yeah. So, Guess but then, I like, they, they, they go take him there. And then, like, like, haha. Like, they're running away, like, oh, no, you got to keep up with this. Keep up with this. And then, like, they leave him. But then they end up getting lost. And then they get really scared. And who comes to save them? But the friend they left there. Isn't that, like, doesn't that sound like a movie you'd not want to watch because it's terrifying? I guess. <laughs> would, you, would you show that to your kids? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, man. Matt. That's tell him what the movie most is. It's Winnie the Pooh. It's Winnie the Pooh. It's horrible. Wait, that was the Tigger and movie, he... wasn't it? Yeah, it's no, the Tigger. No, the, no, the no. With... The Tigger movie was when he goes with the family. I remember that one. Yeah, because Rabbit goes and leaves, tries to leave Tigger all alone, and then he ends up getting lost, and then Tigger comes back, and he's like, "Hey, yeah, I remember that part." Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. Like, like, like he he hates Tigger because he's like too enthusiastic, and he's like, "Yo, fam." Let's just leave him and think he's going to die so he's never happy again. And then he'll stop doing happy movements and ruining my house. And it's horrible. I was watching it and I was like, kids watch this. What a horrible thing for kids to watch. Yeah, but imagine a kid's, a kid's like that though. Imagine a kid's like, oh yeah, let's, let's do this. And he watches it and realizes that it's bad. And No, they won't do that. They'll probably do it more actually. Have you ever it. seen Watership Down? With like Who rabbits full on dying, there's like blood everywhere, and they're like their eyes are like all hollow when they oh, die and God, stuff like that. Oh God, yeah. That was supposed to be a kids movie. That is not a kids no, movie. No, that's a that really is old not kids a kids movie. movie. That's back it's... in the day when Disney had like constant alcohol and smoking. Disney. No, no, no. That, that was back in the day when like yeah. Disney still had like good old days smoking cigars Pardon and the kids and, with and get, gore and violence. Dumbo gets drunk and has a massive acid trip. Oh, I remember that. That was creepy. I don't like that bit. Remember uh, Willy Wonka and like the trippy scene in the tunnel? Dude, it, the whole thing was a trippy scene. No, no. Have you seen the fan theory on how he planned to have the kids killed? No. What? So, I just got well, chills though. Wait, okay, no. You know how like he's, he's like, oh, one of the, oh, look, one of the, the fat kid fell in the river. Ha ha ha. Umpa lumpa dumpa de doo. And then, <laughs> and then like they go on the boat, but the boat has the exact amount of seats as the people there. He planned for those people to oh, die. He planned for Fat Kid to fall in. Like Did you thing. drink fizzy lifting drink? Imagine that. Imagine like waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat, just remembering him screaming. Did you drink fizzy lift? He was, he was supposed to be blended. When he came back, Willy Wonka was just like, yo, you're still alive? Yo, I thought the, uh, the, the spinning fan would have got you. I mean, hey, good boys. <sighs> I actually, hmm. <laughs> Did you see that one? It's years old. It was probably like 2007, 2000, like eight ish sort of time, but they did an animation of, you know, when they get lifted by the fizzy lifting drink. <laughs> I think it's like really OG it's college, college humor. humor. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, quick, quick, Charlie, you had a burp. <laughs> I can't, I can't burp, nor can I. And then, the, the, what do we do? And then the grandpa's like, let me go, Charlie, first. I couldn't bear to watch you die. 
And then he just uh, gets blended and blood goes everywhere. And he's just sniveling, crying, going, come with me. And oh, God. The video just cuts out. What the hell? <laughs> it was so funny. I saw it like 50 times in a row. I was howling in laughter. Jesus. <laughs> I'll tell you about the time I went to, um, I went to Cadbury's World. Um, it, it's... It, where Cadbury's was originally founded, because they've got like their own Is it? town. It sounds like, Born, like Bourneville, yeah. Bourneville? Yeah, Bourneville. So yeah, yeah, I think the chocolate factory gets so big, they got so many workers or whatever, that they made like literally a town around it, and everyone that there just pretty much worked in Cadbury's. And it's like this chocolate factory thing, you get this tour, and I was like, oh yeah, heck yeah, I'm, I'm way up for this, I'm digging you down to clan till I'm dead in the ground, bruv. Um, and to get hyped, I ran to Blockbuster, grabbed Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and just watched it the night before until like two in the morning. And super hyped, like rocking back and forth. You know, like, um, uh, what's, what's that anime we've been watching? The, the My Hero Academia. You know, when he's like watching All Might constantly and just shifting like back and forth going like super fast. That was me. I was getting super hyped. And we got the train there and we were walking. We had to walk from the train to the actual factory. And there's this corner shop with Cadbury's written on it. Um, I think it was like a really run down, crappy looking corner shop. And I was like, do you reckon if I go in there, he's going to start singing, who can make the sunrise? Who can make the sunrise? I was trying to pull people's arms to come in with me to go to it, but they didn't want to. And we got there and it's really lame. Yeah, it's just a like, weird, like, educational marketing, just, like, tour. I'm just like, duh, duh, duh. That, well, we picked this in this country. It's brown when you pick it. I was going to say, it's, uh, when you when you said it's a Cadbury, what is it, Cadbury Worlds, what you said? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It sounds like a theme park. No, it's just, uh, it's like a factory, but they, it's like, uh, it's all colorful and stuff. They, it's not quite Willy Wonka-esque, but it's like, it's very cool, like, uh, there's this old sitcom, I forgot that used to have it, but it used to be sponsored by Cadbury's and they had a whole street made of chocolate and this little chocolate animation dude for the intro. And there's that that there's that there's street, but it's like not real chocolate. It's just brown walls. I was so disappointed and I wanted to oh, eat no. the walls. And then um, there's another one where they had this like, uh, it's a kind of a really popular advert where it's this an, uh, animatronic gorilla doing Phil Collins, you know, that do -do 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 on the drums. That was yeah. actually Rick Roldo's <laughs> kind of drumming with my mouth there. Um, you know, the I can feel it coming in and he lip syncs it to it. There's that machine there. And at the time that I think it was the Euro Cups or the World Cup uh, football or soccer, if you're a heathen. And they had like footballs for each um, country with their names written on it. And I think a little chocolate flag. And if they were knocked out, the, the ball was smashed. So it's like it showed that they were out and then there's like a couple of balls left that because it was like partway through the tournament. It's kind of cool, but it just, it wasn't, I don't know. I think it's because I set my bar so high watching Willy Wonka. Yeah, you watched like an impossible like glass elevator. It can't be impossible. Sky, fizzy lifting drink, experimental licking the walls. But do you know what disappointed me when I went to Kyber's World? Like with school, what? like when I was little. It's like, you know, it's like a pound for like a big block of chocolate back in those days. I was like, yo, it's probably going to be even cheaper there because it's where it's made. They don't have to pay anything extra. And the shop was super expensive. And as a kid, I was just like, I didn't understand that as a marketing decision as a kid. I was like, I don't want to buy anything. I'll just wait till I go home and get it from the shops. Don't understand. I'm a five-year-old. What is this? And See, then like, I never the grew there was the, I, I've gone over to like the Coca-Cola world, which is supposed to be like a bottling plant that's over in Atlanta, right? They actually do the make a... Yeah, fizzy lifting... <laughs> No, they actually do make a big show out of it, and um, like they they try to make it look super cool. Like they have big, elaborate rooms that is like yes, yeah, so you can see them all being bottled, and here's Coca Cola from around the world, and all the different flavors and things that other countries have. Look, it tastes like strawberries. How barbaric! It's, it's like they they actually do go through and try to make it like Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, and afterward you go through you go through the where the bottles are getting pushed off to be processed, and they'll just take one of the glass bottles up and they put it in the bag for you and like here you go one for free for going on the tour do you know do you know they where there's chocolate like bars yeah you, you get free chocolate bars but it's like 20 something pounds a ticket i think so you no no yeah you offset the cost you're like uh, I want yeah more. it's the same thing with the, like, uh, just holding the bag going like you know a little more you know what a few more crunchies thank you <laughs> no the, the the coke one is the same way it's like uh, i think like the tickets were like actually about the same thing like 30 dollars to go on the tour um yeah. but it's like 
Yeah, you get one bottle, but it, it makes it feel special because they pull it off the the line for you. Uh, you get one before it goes to the stores. <laughs> I was hoping to get like loads of discount chocolate. Like Coops was saying earlier, like I was I was thinking it's gonna be super cheap because it's made right next to me, but it was more expensive and it kind of hurt me a little inside too. <laughs> I feel you, Creeps. I feel you, bruv, bruv. Do you know what annoys me? I don't so, like beer. Because the, the adult version, I'd say, is the Guinness factory in Dublin, I think it is. Where, like, the building is vaguely shaped like a pint of Guinness. And they do give you, like, a lot of Guinness at the end to, like, dr try that's, like, just fresh off the press. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's like the adults Willy Wonka world, I guess. So, wait, what you're saying is the beer factory did a better job of putting together a Willy Wonka experience than the actual chocolate factory. Probably. I want to go to or a at least gave you more stuff. Yeah. Dizzy lifting lift drink. <laughs> Dizzy <laughs> lifting drink, am I right? Because it's get you junk. junk. Matt, what have you been up to this week? <laughs> uh, I went down south to the the bottom the the bottom left of England. It's a little sticking out tail bit um, for a couple of days oh, cool. last week. Yeah, I can't remember why though. <laughs> what? I just remember being really ill. Was, yeah, I was gonna say, so, you, you know, know last week was really sick. Yeah. Uh, last, yeah, because I was meant to do the podcast and literally on the night of the podcast that uh, we were recording, I was like, I just typed to you guys going, I can't make it. And I, I was just, I was completely out of it. And the next day I woke up like dizzy, you know, like head cold or, yeah. you know, like feverish. And that was the day I was traveling. So I traveled down, had an all right time, you know, like it's, it's near the beach. You know, so you try the local cuisines, have a little bit of food, tried the claw machine, lost a bunch of times. <laughs> And then I went to sleep, couldn't sleep. And then I woke up just shivering, like full on convulsion. I was like kicking the wall next to me because I was, I was cold shivering. So I was boiling hot, sweating, but still shaking like a dildo. And then I had that day. That was fun. It's just things like that. I don't know. It's just weird. I was just in and out of it, but it's fun. It's fun. It's warm. Yeah, that, that, you got you to gotta do a full on beach trip for the summer. That's that's always fucking awesome. I didn't go to the beach. I was Wait, next what? to it. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have a beach, it's a beach trip, not a, look here. It was a hell of a trip at the night, jeez, I was yeah. <laughs> so, You can go to also... a beach trip without going to the beach. <laughs> really? Do it all the time, yeah. I thought, right, it's just a trip. It's, no, you, you go, okay, when you say that you go, <laughs> maybe it's just me, because I'm fat, but it's like, whenever I go off to, like, uh, go to the beach area, I can't swim anyway. I don't go there for the beach, I go there for, like, the experience <laughs> of being near the beach. <laughs> and, like, the oh. food and shit. <laughs> I ended up uh, caving in because Creeps' whole tarot card things, uh, he's been talking about it and showing me his cards nonstop. So I was like, you know what? I, we've, we walked past one of those sort of witch shops that has those rock things. I went inside and I got myself a deck. I got I got mermaids and all the cards have titty on them. It's just booby, booby mer mermaids. I didn't know they're all going to be topless. I was just flicking through going, this one's topless, this one. Oh gosh, they're all gonna be like this, aren't they? If you don't want it, I'll take it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get your own. Have my own. But no, nah, apart from You don't have a booby one. No, my own's oh, yeah. of cats. Which are better. Yeah. No. Are you, you saying which are better, like question or which are which better? Which are better like... question mark? <laughs> is oh, like, you, the answer is not yeah. <laughs> Boo booby mouse pad, a booby oh. mouse pad, booby booby mermaids all the way. No, oh, that was nice. They got the, the cats instead of really cute. Instead of swords, they got tridents. It's really cool. Well, and they got like sea horses. I like mine. They're cute, and the the cats and like one will be riding a horse for the night, and the other one will be holding a sword. And in the cups, he's sitting in the cup and having a little bath, and it's really cute. So that sounds like. What do you do? Like, okay, so here, here's something actually a tarot question that I, I don't really know too well about. But like, it seemed a whole lot like when, at least when you were doing that during your stream before Creeps, you were doing, we were watching Evo, that like, there's not really a whole lot of like, super bad ominous cards. Uh, it depends on the reading. Like, because each card's position has a different thing. So like, say, you know, the tower is supposed to be the super bad ominous one. But I kept getting it in good positions when I was doing readings for people. Hmm. And like say okay. the other day, like I was doing a reading where uh some reason in the fear section, like what like an upcoming fear was the celebration card. And I was like staring at it. I was like, how do I read that? 
And I was like, is there is there a celebration coming up? Like, is there an event coming up that you're not looking forward to? Turns out her sister was like going to have like a, a quince or something like that, that she was not looking forward to do. And I was like, oh, I got it. Huh. That's the cards, man. It was the cards. We read the future. Kind of amazed at how well that actually works. Yeah. Yeah. How no, lucky you are accurate. guessing. Am I right? Lucky is work. Yeah. That's the way I feel about it. It's like, <laughs> I'm amazed at how lucky it feels like it is always seems to get. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. With creeps, these ones are always spot on. With mine, because I don't know what any of the cards means, I'm just making it up. Like, yeah. don't get a well, reading from that's me. That's the only thing. I want to not believe it. I really want to not believe it because I'm usually like, oh, it's dumb. What a ghost. Ghosts are just made up stories. Am I right? But the problem is, like, I was also told ages ago that I'm, I could be prophetic. And now that I started doing these tarot cards, they've been scary accurate. And I'm like, it's not real, I swear. Like, as a sweat drops down my brow. <laughs> Creeps the prophet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, creeps, dude, dude. Can, are you, uh, not, no, no, not creeps. Matt. Matt? Matt. Do, do a me? reading. Do, do a reading? Okay, cool. All right, God. I got the cards with me. I gotta do one card, okay? It's never asked. You got the tower. <laughs> it's like the worst one, isn't it? Wait, was it? What? Oh, my God. <laughs> I think it's, I'm, Boom, I'm, that's your reading. You got the worst one. Speaking about the tower, how's your week been? Speaking, <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about the building on fire with two people falling out to the deaths. How's your week been? <laughs> how's your building going? Oh yeah, God, how's your house? A fire with two people falling out to their deaths? Yeah, yeah. to the sea. The so, deep, so deep my sea, the favorite so my, part of the world. Oh my fucking God. So my house that has two people in it next to a lake. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> It's going okay, actually. Um, the uh, I just I I've been putting in like these new kind of switches and had to learn a lot about uh, exactly how to do that. So I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos that basically explain like this is the wire that you never touch. This is the wire <laughs> that you can sometimes touch. Like <laughs> things like that. Like what all the colored wires, where do they connect to inside of light sockets and things like that. Because I've been having to change some of them out. Um, I also discovered that the downstairs uh, master bedroom switch is wired incredibly weird. Um, and I, I was so happy that after an hour and a half of fiddling with it, breaking one room's electricity and repairing that room's electricity, and then uh, eventually hooking it up, that I managed to get it to hook over with the new switches. So none of them work on dimmers anymore, thank God. Um, Wait, do you like dimmers? No, it's not that. It's like the previous owner of this house had, there's a, there's a half bathroom downstairs. It's like a guest bathroom, right? And um, the light works on a dimmer, but the dimmer can't turn off. It oh, just, no. Yeah, it always just turns it down as low as possible. Oh. So that's majorly, that's why I had to start replacing light switches because like these dimmers, that's how they are. So the lights are always on technically and they're always using up electricity. So I'm trying to switch them all out so that they'll turn off and save me money. <laughs> Says the but, person who never turns off his computer. Okay, look, there's some things that are made to be set, kept on. There's some things that aren't. <laughs> The, uh, no, the, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to get that to, to work and also, uh, tried to do the home, um, the home security system, like this, this, uh, smart home security system so I can monitor it from my phone. And like that, that's part of the irony because we moved up all this stuff this Saturday. Um, we had like this giant moving truck and me and my dad got in it and, uh, drove it all the way, all the way up to, to the new house. And I had made sure that the security system was going to be delivered by Amazon on the same day that we got here. So I got a notification on my phone when it got delivered. The guy took a picture of the package and um, he left it in front of the door. And it was like, that's fine uh, because we're going to be there in like an hour. When By the time we get up there, uh, someone has taken the package from the front door and left with it. So somebody stole my security system. It's <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. That's it's like so dumb that in worst America. Worst irony. Just leave things on people's porches and then it's like, oh no, it was stolen. As I hear from everyone in America who has packages. You know what we do? What? We get them delivered to other people's houses and it, they tell you who it's been delivered to. Wait, what? Yeah, so it's like, oh, it's been left at number 19 with like, I don't know, Glenn or something. So then you can be like, oh, hey, Glenn, I know your name. I know it's delivered here. There's evidence. Can I have my package? Wait, why would they deliver it to someone else's house? Or like a neighbor. 
That's weird. I don't know my neighbors. I just moved here. No, because you don't know who took it. Because someone, like a random neighbor took it. But when you have the name and number on it, they can't keep it. That jeans. What? <laughs> That's ridiculous. People that here ridiculous? aren't that nice. People here are nice. No, it's America. Full of assholes, man. They yeah, can tell because they took your package. <laughs> <laughs> Land of the free. Thing. Land of the free packages, am I right? <laughs> oh my god. No, okay. So I ended up getting this... Uh, this security thing for my for my door though, it's like this ring doorbell. Essentially what it does, anytime anybody walks within 10 feet of my door, it clicks on its camera, it clicks on a little red light and it starts filming them. And it films a 30 second clip that just says like, there it is, like I see you. And uh, if they take anything or they, if, uh, even like ring said like if they break the doorbell and I can't use the video from it to, um, to give to the police to figure out who it is that vandalized my property, they'll just give me a brand new doorbell. Yeah. Wow. See, yeah. wouldn't really, that have been really useful? <laughs> It's well, okay. Useful for the package. <laughs> no, it's okay. That one wasn't stolen. I'm happy about that too. <laughs> <laughs> See, what I was saying is like, um, just get some some old Amazon boxes and just tape them up, you know, make them look new, and just leave them on your porch and just see, just see if anyone kind of like gives it the old, ooh, what's this over here? Picks it up, looks up. There's a camera. Oh crap! You know what I mean? You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Oh, imagine you know, sting like, imagine setup. Uh, yeah, no, not just a sting operation, but imagine setting up a huge ARG of just like, you know, you leave the package there, they open it, it's just a brick, and taped to the brick is a letter written in, like, like newspaper cutouts, and it's just like, I'm watching you, and then like, you, you, you find his license, you know, like, you, you find his registration, you follow him home, and then you find out where he lives, and you just start leaving Amazon packages with like, 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 pig hearts but he doesn't know that it's from a pig since it looks like a human heart and it's just like you say, start leaving more ominous things on his doorstep all in amazon him, boxes giving him a brick is just going to end up having a brick flying through my window into my living room Fine. that's what i was thinking with like poop An Xbox 360. i was thinking like just put a huge turd in it but then i realized they'll probably just try throw it back i don't know Oh, you find out where <laughs> they they're gonna open it up like on the front porch this is gonna let they've stolen no, it so they just pop it over <laughs> what would you do if I found out where you lived and then like I find your ring doorbell and then I try prank you by like, oh, it would be funny if I rub something disgusting on it. And then all you see in the video is me pulling down my trousers and like rubbing my bare asshole on it. So every time you try to ring your doorbell, it, like you touch my ass. <laughs> Ew, so okay. not only do so, you touch my ass, but you also one, haven't seen it. I, I have a 30 second video of you, Creeps <laughs> McCosta, that I will be posting on to YouTube and becoming unbelievably rich. <laughs> <laughs> so I welcome this. <laughs> I'll do it. I ain't scared. My bare ass. I'll put that on the internet. <laughs> no, would, would you really? That's a wager. Yeah, like so close you can count the hairs and smell the musk. <laughs> like a 4K video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not like you'll make money on it. It'll be demonetized tomorrow, right? No, uh, no. Uh, they can't demonetize videos as long as they're advertiser friendly. Yeah. And many people would want to advertise on it. Yeah. My ass is kid advertise. friendly, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you can't Put tell if Disney it's actually channel. an app. <laughs> just so they might just be a... Uh, Wait, what? <laughs> just upload it to you, porn. You know, that's like say, just, it could titles. be an animal's ass. Nobody knows. You can't, you can't censor an animal's butt on the animal planet. It's true. Oh my gosh. What? But then how would you prove it's me? Ooh. No, I'll have you autograph a copy. <laughs> of the video? <laughs> yeah. So all I have to do is forge your autograph on a picture of like a willy and I'll be Good like, luck. It's Mr. Creepy Pasta. Good luck <laughs> trying to forge my autograph. My autograph looks like I literally just held a pen in my nose and then wiggled my head back and forth. <laughs> Jokes on you, you just gave away the secret. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> you know what's so stupid? I actually have a Creeps McPasta autograph that I've had ready for like two, three years. I've never used because I don't go to public events. I was going to say, yeah, you haven't done any. Uh, I don't think you've ever done like a public event where you've been as, as Creeps, have you? No, no, I haven't. But... I thought, you know, it'd be cool if I designed my own uh, signature, and I did because I just do stupid things, and it's never been used. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mail you a picture. I want you to autograph it and mail it back. Yeah, I could do that. The first ever signed you know, thing. The first ever signed thing. Yeah. Yeah. The the, fir the first ever signed piece from uh, from from Creeps and Costa. I'm gonna like mount it right there over my bed. 
Get your sign, Genity. You're gonna give it to you. You're just gonna give it to Spike because he asked for it. You're not gonna, you know, he said it was a dinner. Buy me a piece, but I'm curious what it is. If it's like, what's that? What's that one Asian guy you kept saying? Gacked. Oh my gosh, I've been trying to remember that. Is it Gacked? Oh really? Random yeah, Asian? Gacked. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to remember him because I someone was talking about someone else. I was like, kept getting them mixed up. I get a signed picture of Gacked. I'll do it. I was trying to pass <laughs> off that I'm a mostly Gacked. Asian guy today. I will do right. that. I'm gonna. To I'm who? gonna do my best. What? To who? Oh, I'm trying was... to pass off that you're a muscly Asian dude. <laughs> you know what? Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, it, it was. It was my Discord. I was like, oh, I yeah, like because I made a joke about being like I forgot why. I was. I must have said I was ripped or something as a joke. But then like, ah, oh, prove it. And I, I just googled like hot topless Asian, and then it came up with like loads of like Asian women. I was like, okay, let's let's make this more refined. So like, hot topless Asian men. <laughs> <laughs> Stop laughing at me. <laughs> so I typed in a hot topless Asian man, it came up with loads of gay porn. Like loads of gay porn. I'm guessing you got safe search off. Yeah, of course. Who has safe search on? I'm not five, I'm at least twelve. <laughs> did, yeah, you, did you find your picture in the end? Yeah, I found a guy with like he was like a topless, ripped, super ripped Asian guy, but with like a huge bulge and was wearing like really tight underwear. And I was like, yeah, this is me. <laughs> it's an old picture of me. You're, you're, you're doing that. <laughs> you're doing that that one thing, the stereo. You're perpetuating the stereotype and just seeing if people believe you. Yeah, like yeah, it's, it's me. Thing. The thing is, obviously, I can't, I, I, I'm not, I'm not an idiot. I'm not gonna pass out for real. So I was like, here's a modern picture of me, and that's why I was posting pictures of, like fat Asian uh, people in our Discord. That video, I was like, this is me now, and it's just like a fat Asian guy, like really happy about food. It's the most adorable <laughs> video ever. It's super cute. <laughs> so funny. He's just, a, he's just he's, laughing. He's just laughing at having food. I'm like, you are the most wholesome man I've ever met. Where I want to be picture? you. Oh my god. Where is this? Oh my god. He's so happy. That, yeah. Yeah. Not good for him. Good for him. Most life is as happy as that Asian guy receiving food. No, dude, when you think about it, like, yeah, that's that's what you strive for, you know? You strive yeah. for, for any any kind of thing where it's like, I, I want anything to make me as happy as this guy is right now. Are you guys seriously making your life goals to be happy, like, happy as he is to food? Okay, look, suppose... Matt, are you, are you trying to say you never want to be that happy? You know, well, we put it that way. I kind of want it now. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, man. Everybody strives to be happy. I want to be as happy as this guy is. He's found something that he likes. He found something that he's to be happy about. I want that. I don't necessarily need to be happy about food, but I want to be just as happy. I wish I had food. You know what I've been doing? <laughs> my my whole diet these last few weeks has been nothing but jam with butter and toast. That's been my diet, like really what the bad. Like, I need to learn to cook for myself again. Cause like, why haven't you been eating? I, I don't know. I just can't be bothered. I can't be bothered. And do you know what it reminded me of? That I started Googling was um this one kid in Brazil, 16. He died because he masturbated 42 times in a row. <laughs> what the fuck? And I, I was just like, because for some reason it came to me because I was talking about it years ago. But it came to me like, that is the death I'm going to have. I live alone. I eat nothing but jam and toast. And like, I'm just going to masturbate found from like with... sun up to sunset? Yes. <laughs> that's going to be my life. I'm just going to, oh I'm going to be, I'm going to be found with my like joggers wrapped around my ankles. Haven't showered in three weeks. And just like a, like a 10 hour compilation of porn that's like 90% over. <laughs> oh. I've resigned. That is my life. <laughs> oh. Holy shit. You know what that oddly reminds me of? What? There's a, a picture of a, it's like the underside of a desk of an employee that's just gotten fired. And they oh. lifted it up, and underneath, it's just, it's just dry white splatter from either end, from far, it's just white splatter everywhere. It looks like someone's just got a paint can by the top of the lid and the bottom of it, and it's just swung it at it. It's yeah, just... How do you even do that at work? Do I, do well, it's under the desk. Do you want to hear I a more disgusting one? Uh, slightly no. Like, slightly yes. 
<laughs> so there was a, like it was it was a Reddit thread on like it was like the Ask Reddit where it was talking about like the most disgusting crime scenes they went to, and one of them they were called out about like a domestic like shouting and stuff like that, and the guy goes in the guy's room and it stinks like he wretches almost throws up it's like the most disgusting thing and this guy's probably seen dead bodies because he's you know a policeman and there's a handprint just smeared on the wall just like just like burnt like etched in just this dark brown and he thinks damn the guy probably got maced like really bad but even though he was on instigating because he probably got maced because he, he was just going nuts turns out no he's just got this horrible habit where he masturbates gets on his hand and smears it on the wall and that's just like <gasps> crusted oh. from years of doing that oh. how is that a habit i don't know in... i think there must have been something wrong with him oh my yeah, god i just... think oh and the reason you know that 42 times one i mentioned the reason why mm. i remembered that is because i was eating jam and toast and i was like i mean jam and put toast and I'm subscribed to an MMO. And it reminded me of like, you know, the story, you know, obviously I do like listicles on my, on my, create some pasta on YouTube, Google it. And like, we were going to do one of video game deaths. And one of the things we found was this one kid who played like World of Warcraft and he died while masturbating. And like all his friends left comments like, yep, he died how he lived and <laughs> stuff like that. And I'm like, that, that's going to be my obituary. <laughs> he died as he lived. <laughs> how did how people just die, die like, masturbating? What? Like, as, <laughs> yeah. as normal, healthy human beings, like, I guess, I don't know if that's normal or healthy, but like, you know, like, how do you just die masturbating? I mean, like, I've seen, uh, always, well, I Watch haven't seen, me. but I've heard things, oh my God. <laughs> I've heard things about like people who will die, like, because they're hanging themselves for a good time, but like, I don't know how you just, damn. <laughs> Have you guys seen World's Greatest Dad? Uh, yes. You have? Uh, one oh, with, um, you Robin, uh, Williams. Ron, Robin Williams, yeah. Matt, have you seen it? Wait, what's what? What is it? A movie? Yeah, yeah. it's a movie with Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. You know, people was like, "Oh yeah, Robin Williams. Oh my gosh, uh, genie and stuff like that." I was like, no, he just like that's a dark ass comedy. Have you not seen it, Matt? No. So, yeah, really dark. Why have I so, never seen this? When did you watch it? It I was like, years ago when I worked at Blockbusters. But basically, it's about Robin Williams as a dad, and he's it's like he's got no connection with his son. His son's just like, "Get out of here, dad!" Like one of those like asshole kids. Like, uh, doesn't look him like he's, he's just like an asshole kid, basically, because he's, you know, teenager. Teenagers, am I right? Any teenagers listening to this? This is you. Anyway, he's like, he he's, um, you know, Robin Williams. The dad walks in on him, like, jacking it. And he's like, get out, John, I hate you. And he's like, oh, man, I'm I'm father. I'm, I'm a failure and stuff like that. And then, like, I forgot what happens. But basically, it ends with him walking in and his son, like, and there's porn again. He's like, ah, oh, no, I did it again. Sorry, son. Looks back and he's dead because he's got a belt around his neck and he was asphyxiating, asphyxiating himself. So to cover up the shame, he writes this really poetic suicide note, but then it backfires where he becomes famous because of like this suicide note that was so well written that it was like people were empathizing with it and like praising his son as a hero and like praising him as a hero. And he has to keep up this long ruse. But, but the reality <laughs> was he was just a bad father and he was a bad kid. It's really dark. I probably butted it because it's been years since I've seen it. But That's it was actually a rather nuts. accurate way to explain it. But yeah, that was the dark comedy. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah. That's and he's just hella in the craziest though. situations. I want to see this film now. There's so many good films being suggested tonight. And then mm -hmm. that one that Spike suggested. Hop into the, yeah. we'll hop into the rabbit. We'll, we'll, we'll watch some movies. <laughs> No, actually, that uh, actually that might be a good good thing to do because we are just about out of time, unfortunately, for this week's Dungeon Brunch podcast. Oh no! Boo! <laughs> Everybody is <laughs> crazy. Everybody sounds so enthusi enthusiastic about us. Yeah, finally. <laughs> Thank, thank you guys for listening to the Dungeon Runners Podcast. Be sure to follow the Dungeon Runners Podcast on YouTube, on SoundCloud, and be able to uh, watch the recordings live on uh, twitch.tv slash dungeon runners. Um, be able to see us live when we record this, as well as we play video games and things like that. And you can also now subscribe to the Dungeon Runners Podcast on iTunes and on the Google Play Store.